Hi guys, welcome back to Caffeinated Dragonware. I'm Stanley, and today we'll be doing something a little different than usual. You see, over the past few months, my wife and I have been documenting our progress creating a mobile game called Exit Stage Left. She's been handling the programming, meaning all things related to the code and how the game functions, and I'm in charge of assets, meaning music, visual design, user interface, etc. While the experience has been pretty fun, lately I haven't been able to create enough content to justify an entire episode on my half of the work. So I decided I'd start a side project and see where we go with it. Using a game making program I purchased a while ago, RPG Maker MV, I want to design a fantasy video game. I was inspired when I showed Lisa the Lord of the Rings for the first time. It brought back so much nostalgia and reminded me why I love that story so much. Potatoes! To kick things off, what's the first thing you think of when you want to create a fantasy story? A map! Potato. But where do we even begin with such a massive undertaking? To create an entire world to set your story in? Here, let, let's just do it. Let me just, uh, no, wait, that's not, oh, oh, if I just, oh, how about some mountains here? Ooh, that'd look really cool. This'll be a neat coastline, yeah, and rivers, yes, can't forget them, and... Not only does none of it follow the laws of nature, but my mountains are all over the place. And what the heck, I basically recreated Earth. Not to mention I'm fairly certain rivers don't work like that. I mean, who knows how they look because really, rivers are just horrible, evil, tedious spaghetti that you have to tame to your very will even when you're trying to do it the right way, but still! Urgh, good grief. I really need a guide here. As a side note, real quick though, uh, you don't need to have a realistic fantasy world. Like, you can break every rule in the book if you feel like it. I want to make it as realistic as possible, basically just an alternate Earth. But uh, you do you. I'm just saying. There's just a disclaimer. With that being said, I found an amazing YouTuber by the name of Artifexian who does a good job going through the process of making a map from the ground up. Realistically. I'm talking land masses, I'm talking plate tectonics, I'm talking wind patterns, ocean currents, mountain ranges, weather bands, climate. The dude shows you how to include climate. And rivers. He shows you how to make rivers, and I just, I hate rivers so much. Anyways, I took what I learned from him and streamlined the process with a few ideas of my own. Now my ideas are more on the technical side of how to do what he's trying to do anyways, so I honestly can't take credit beyond just my method. Anyways, let's get started. In this first episode, we'll make Blade Tectonics from scratch. The program I'll be using, and one I highly recommend, is Krita. It's a free art program you can download and it has a ton of amazing features. Uh, link in the description for everything you'll want to use if you're going to go with Krita. Uh, now let's begin. Again. For real. The problem I personally run into when it comes to drawing plate tectonics is I get overwhelmed with deciding what goes where. First issue, I won't be able to properly line up the seams of my world where the map wraps around itself. Another problem is that, like it or not, nothing is new under the sun and we're always influenced by the familiar. So my plate tectonics wind up resembling Earth even if I'm trying to avoid this. Finally, there's the issue of warping around the poles. This results in some horribleness. So there are the problems, but what about the solutions? Let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do address is the, uh, the seams, the problem with the seams. Well, what you need there, let's go to a wraparound mode. So you go to view and then wraparound mode, and that'll tell you, this'll basically make it so that you can create any, any pattern you want in Krita, like look at this. See, look, and now, boom, instantly a seamless pattern. Uh, yeah, but wraparound mode is very helpful in Krita, and uh, if you want to know where you originally started, you can just go to view, uh, show grid, yep, and then now you can see the box, the original bounds of stu and stuff of your map, and then that'll help you inform, that'll help keep you informed there. I'm gonna turn that off real quick and get started on this. So how do I address the randomness and the fact that I create familiar patterns instinctively? Well, what you do is you go to that brush set that I recommended you download um, from DeviantArt, and uh, what you do is you get this cloud brush right here, uh, and it creates very, 
interesting shapes that can be very organic and rugged looking and stuff. I mean, it's no, I know it's for clouds, but <laughs> it works for continental plates and stuff too. The bottom of the line is I'm using these splotches to form continental plates in a distorted random way. And you want to keep it smaller towards the middle and bigger towards the top and bottom of the image. So the next thing I need to deal with is the warping at the top and the bottom. Because remember, what I told you is all this stuff up top is going to look very crunched and weird looking on a sphere. And the way to deal with this, that I like to do it anyways, is take a sample of one of these colors up top or just make up a random color, it doesn't matter. And then go to Critis Gradient Tool. So you go to the Gradient Tool and then from the top I'm holding down shift, by the way, to make it a perfect vertical alignment. That's a trick. From like 90 to 60 degrees north and south, and then same with the bottom. So let's just do from there to about 60 degrees up. Boom, and what this does, it basically smears, quote unquote, smears everything so that it's a universally solid color right there at the top and the bottom. And now, the fun part. So what you're gonna do is go to filter, artistic, Posturize. What this is going to do is reduce the complexity of it as in as few steps as possible between colors and gradients and stuff. So I'm going to drop it down to two, and bada bing, bada boom, look at this. You suddenly have a much more clearly defined uh, pattern of plate tectonics right here, and that fading I did at the top and the bottom makes it so that the uh, they're smeared, they're more stretchy, kind of like in real life with map projections. Uh, anyway, so now let's go in there and do the final step for this video. I've added a white layer and dropped its opacity down a little bit so that it's like a makes it a little faded and easier for me to work with. It's neither here nor there, I'm just explaining how I did that. Uh, now let's trace in the continental plates. Uh, so you can... Blah blah blah. Man, I really like the sound of my own voice, don't I? What I'm trying to do is stay between two colors because that way it creates a nice seam where they meet. So just pay attention to what I'm doing here, how I'm following the intermediary between two colors and how I'm sometimes sticking closer to one or the other or just going with what makes sense in my mind as far as plate tectonics. Um, more small ones, more detailed ones in the middle, less detailed ones and bigger ones towards the top and bottom because of the warping and stuff, of course. Nice, okay, cool. So now we have an interesting pattern here, but what's it even mean? What are we gonna do with this? Well, glad you asked. Let's get rid of wraparound mode again. And when you're back with the basic thing. So the next step is to go ahead and let me create a new layer. We'll call it uh, plate guides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide how these plates are moving and that'll in turn determine the shape of your mountains and oceans and all that stuff later down the road. I'm drawing a line where I think separations would be where the plates are splitting apart from the force of like an updraft of pressure and actually it might be cooler looking if uh, this one is a big split straight down the planet. Maybe one right here. Oh right here. Here's a good looking one. Yeah. Yeah there. So we have two two sources of uh, pressure. So now this plate is gonna be causing a lot of pressure on the whole planet where everything's moving this way and this way. And then same with this plate this way and this way. Like this, these separations, these divergent boundaries will be causing that. All right, so here you can see I've started working on it, deciding where everything goes based on the two main sources of pressure. Yeah. So we got a general overview of the plates. Now what we need to do is uh, determine which plates are continental and which ones are oceanic. A good rule of thumb here is the bigger ones, the, the biggest plates, you want them to be oceanic because you want your world to be, if you want it to be Earth-like, you're gonna have it mostly ocean. So I think it's like two thirds of the Earth is ocean or something. So definitely I'm gonna have it oceanic wherever the plates are separating. Sweet, okay. So now we get to work on the collision types between plates. You go in here and you find out where the overall movements of these plates are, like this entire plate right here, for example. Because it's being forced apart, you'll notice that it'll probably be rotating a bit across the earth or something like that because plates can rotate. They can't, they don't always just go in in straight lines. They can rotate and twist and turn like slow motion car accidents, you know? So let's see, right here we have an obvious source of conflict here. And what's that mean for everything else? Like, 
the obvious question, what about these two plates, this one and this one? Because they're both going in the same direction. How is that a transform boundary? I always see the picture of the transform boundaries going across like that. Sorry. Think of it like two cars on a highway. If one's going 50 and the other's going 60, and they're both going in the same direction, but they're smashed up against each other and going that speed, one's going to be scraping past the other one at a higher speed, but relative to each other, it's like they're going in opposite directions, because one's slower than the other. It's all about relativity. And actually, this one would be less like this and more like this. You'd be having more of a collision plate here, because this piece would be coming in at this angle, and this piece would be coming in at this angle. So it's kind of like it... You know, if we're doing like this and this, this one's like swooping in and colliding on that side because of the way they're shaped. You gotta pay attention to the overhangs and the lips of the pieces and stuff. And then here's another one. If you think of it like cars going with that metaphor some more, think of it like one's rear ending the other one. In this case, the oceanic plate's rushing up to run into this continental plate and it's causing a collision here where the continental one's gonna be Basically, the oceanic one's gonna subduct under the continental one, like boom, like running and running underneath a steamroller, to use that metaphor. And then, so this one's probably going up this way. We'll have a transform line here. So I can see a mountain chain forming probably along this entire thing. We'll get to that in the next video when we're actually talking about mountains and and the uh, topography and climate and stuff. And there we go. We've established plate movements and what's going to be land and what's going to be water, basically. And in the next video, we're going to cover more for sure. So again, I highly recommend you check out Artifexian's video. Um, he goes into way more detail and explains it. But anyways, there you have it. The beginnings of a wonderful fantasy map. Don't worry. I'll be going into further detail in a few weeks where we get to the real fun stuff like elevation, mountains, and land masses, and climate. That, that stuff is really fun. That's where the real juice is. Anyways, uh, we publish videos every other Saturday related to game design, as well as an ongoing series about the development of Exit Stage Left. So please feel free to subscribe if this is the kind of content you're into. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Until next time, later guys.